with Rob, uh, who's the co-editor of the book with Connie Potter, uh, to just say a, a, a few words about how this project sort of came together and how it works. So it's about storytelling in science fiction, so we created some new science fiction. It's also about storytelling of the science of CERN. There's lots of cool science going on right now, and creating new fiction was a way to tell that story to a, a new, allow it as a new audience to communicate what we're doing in CERN, and what we're trying to find out in a new way, which might, I hope, reach some new audiences. The process was interesting. We worked with Comic Press, and uh, Ra and I had a chat, and we thought, with all the cool science going on, we should, have, we should bring an equal partnership of scientists and writers together. So we put a call out to the scientific community of Europe, who said, look, we want to write some cool new sci-fi. We want you to work with authors. What ideas do you have you think would make a really, really good story? And then we paired up the scientists and engineers with authors, like a dating agency. So we got people together, and these are the two authors that we got involved in this project. And then what's interesting about this particular project was that the scientists and the writer, they were equal, they worked together. So they had lots of discussions between the writers and the scientists about the science. And after every story I find the author, we have a piece by the scientist, written from the first person, explaining from the scientist's point of view the science that we have in the story. And what we have, I think, is pretty unique in the sense that we have the, the, uh, the stories and the science sitting equally side by side, and that's why it's so special. The, the, the opportunity to go to CERN and to talk to scientists there, it was the commission of a, of a lifetime. Well, says his mum, isn't that just fascinating? <laughs> Somewhere trying to contact us, trying to tell us how to escape from this, trying to show us how to see and what to do and how to be. If only we could know it. Perhaps nature has this ability to reach back and, and delete history. Um, do you want to? Do you want to? Do you want to explain the science uh, behind this? Because it sounds crazy. I'll try. I'll try. So, it, I'll try and set some context first. So. In science, we like to build theories about the universe. It's perfectly possible to build a scientific theory about the universe that is totally mathematically correct, but it's just simply not true in our universe. So this particular uh, paper was taken in that spirit. It was exploring the consequences of what is possible. And it's a perfectly reasonable argument. I want to just stop living. I will never have started living in the first place. This is the testimony of the never were. For a little more on the ticket, you get Peter Capaldi. <laughs> Are there any questions? Uh, there are some roving mics. Um, Firstly, as a, as a member of both the scientific and creative communities, I just want to say this is an incredibly exciting collaboration, so thank you to all of you for, for bringing it to life. You mentioned earlier about how accurate you keep the science in, in stories. Do you think there comes a point where trying to adhere to scientific accuracy can limit the, the scope of your story and at, at what point do you feel you strike that right balance of yes this is scientifically accurate enough to be plausible but it's also fun. I think that's a fundamental question about writing fiction actually it doesn't have to be science fiction you know, quite often what you get with um, uh, maybe a new writer is they're writing a piece and it's fiction on and you say this doesn't quite feel true and they say but it happened like that and you think, but that doesn't necessarily lead to fictional truth. How useful are things we don't understand? How useful are things we don't understand? Really useful, because that tells you where to look. So in science, you know what you understand about the universe. You're also really aware of what you don't know, and that's the exciting bit. You know, you get all these you know, talks, and you know, talk to kids, you know, about all the amazing things in the universe. Actually, the fun bit with them, your research I'm talking about is stuff we don't know. Which is the bulk of it. You know, you understand things about the Higgs boson, you understand things about dark matter, you understand things about um, dark energy, and that's the cool thing, that's the thing. That's the so it's, that's the driver for you. Because you want to be as a scientist, you want to understand all this. 
we have run out of time. Uh, there's a few people I need to thank. I need to thank the, El the Elks Council and uh, LHC UK HL for sponsoring this project, uh, the UK RI and the SFTC, um, and also a huge, huge thank you to, to Connie and uh, uh, to Chris Thomas, her, her partner, who, who was integral to this process, and as Lucy said, very tragically died. This, this project is, is dedicated to him, and it wouldn't have happened if it, if it wasn't for him. And also uh, to Connie's brilliant, brilliant organisation. So uh, please join us in, in the bookstore afterwards. But uh, for now, uh, please join me in thanking today's guests. Is this your first time at the Hay Festival? This is my third time at the Hay Festival. I've been twice before. Now, what did I do? I got interviewed once back in, you know, when I still mattered by Alan Yinto. Uh, and more recently, I came along interviewed by Samir Ahmed. So, this is my third time. But this is the best one. I know this was your first short story. The yeah. Brilliant Going Dark The Collision. Are you tempted to write more in that form? I, I really like short stories because, you know, it, they finish you quicker. Um, and in fact, not uh, actually oddly enough, it's what is it? I, wrote, I mean, you can Doctor Who nonsense. I did write on Doctor Who short story. I did enjoy this very much. It was, it was great fun.